Hi guys, welcome to Helen and Chris's YouTube channel. Um, thank you for our new subscribers. Um, we have a few more. And hello, we're going to start with the trigger warning because there's a trigger warning in this for a video this morning. Well, it's actually the afternoon now, so that's a good start, isn't it? <laughs> um, the trigger warning is for self harming. I'm going to do my story from from 13 right to about four years ago um, when I was 46. So that's quite a long history of self-harming. And I started to self-harm when I was 13 because of emotional issues. It was mainly through emotional issues. At, at home, we wasn't allowed to discuss anything with our problems or anything like that. So everything that we had to do was driven under the carpet, if you know what I mean. It was all swept. And so we, we, yeah, we wasn't allowed to speak about issues because we wasn't allowed to laugh, we wasn't allowed to show any emotions or anything like that, and that's not very good for anybody. Um, so it only started with little tiny cuts, and then into my 16s and 17s, it wasn't severe, but it was more when I got to school and it used to happen at school, I used to self-harm at school and they used to inform my dad and they used to say, well look, um, your son has self-harmed today, we've taken him up to the hospital and, you know, we've brought him back to school, but are you aware of it? And my dad would say, well yeah, I'm aware of it. And they would say, well look, if it carries on, we have to call social services. And my dad was a police officer at the time. And he would say to himself, well, no, 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 I, I'll deal with it. Um, you know you know me, I'm a police officer and, um, you know, upstanding member of society, which he was not. And it was sort of, sort of like swept there and he, he said that, oh, I can do it, I can deal with it and all that kind of thing. He never dealt with it. He, he was the sort of man I would come home and he would give me a damn good hiding for it. Now that is the worst thing you could do to somebody. He never asked me how I done it, why I done it, how I, you know what I used to, to do it. Because I used, to, I'm not going to say what I used to use because that that's just going to bring it all up for for other things. But it's very easily accessible. But you know, he took every sharp object that I had once, and I managed to find more sharp objects. So, I mean, it doesn't matter if you take sharp objects away from people, they're always going to find some way to do something. But, at the end of the day, then it started in my 20s again, and that was when it got more serious, and I was sectioned, well, I wasn't sectioned, but I was volunt I had to go into hospital voluntary, they said, you know, more or less, you can go in voluntary and get day release, or you get sectioned, you know, either one of the two, and then if you get sectioned, you won't get day release, you'll have someone f f shadowing you wherever you go, so I said, well, I'll go in voluntary then, so I had two weeks in hospital, with about nine stitches in my arm, and they, um, they kept me in there, because I, uh, they just turned around and they said I had a breakdown. That's what that was for. And I came out of hospital and still carried on. And through my thirties into my middle forties, it, it started to get worse. I did take two overdoses. And I remember one overdose, which was very serious, that I took every single one of the tablets that I had and I ran a whole mile down to the telephone box to make sure that I had it running in my system so quick, the drugs in my system so quick, I got to the telephone box and just collapsed. I ran a whole mile so, they could, so I could get the, the drugs in my metabolism going really quickly. So the ambulance would call them, my stomach pumped, I remember that, and my, my dad turned up because I don't know how it turned up, but I woke up and I thought I was in hell. 
uh, there was Dev shaking the bed trying to keep me awake because he wanted me to stay awake and he got, uh, I, thought, I, said, I said to him could you stop shaking the bed and he said no I have to shake the bed because you, know, you can't fall asleep and my stepmother was there as well that's why I thought I was in hell I did, and I, I never liked any of them and this is, it, this is in my um, when I was about 27 and I wasn't even talking to my dad so I don't know how to manage to call him as my next of kin and absolutely absurd it was you know i did I, he, he, he took me home and he said please don't vomit in my new car that's what he turned around and said he didn't ask me he didn't talk to me or anything like that he took me to my mum's address you know because I, I was living on my own at the time but she, he took me around to my mum's address which i needed to have somewhere to stay where i was safe but my dad wouldn't take me back to his house so you know, what's to be said about that? Don't take any overdoses because, quite frankly, tablets very rarely work. Very rarely work. So there's no point doing that. Liver is itself harming. But at the end of the day, when it comes to around about 40 odd, wasn't it, Helen, that my self harming was really, really bad. Mm. Really bad. I mean, I was, was self harming like about three times a week. And it was really severe injuries really severe injuries that I had I dealt with myself rather than go to hospital. Um, and what made me stop and I I did stop and the thing that made me stop and the thing that made me think more than twice over was when I was rushed into hospital I was rushed into hospital twice and under blue light and I was I lost um, about two litres of blood is what they said when I got to ho uh, hospital and I was, both times I was in recess and they don't, they don't judge you but they, they sent around this psychiatric nurse from and they said that do you understand why you did what you did and I said well yeah I do if I said that I didn't they would have sectioned me but because I knew why I'd done it and I gave them the good enough reason to know why I'd done it they said, OK, well, we'll leave it there. If you need any help, then you can go back to A&E because every single A&E in the United Kingdom has a mental health um, section where you can go. Every single place has a mental health place where you can go. And I said that twice because that is important to know that if you are having a mental breakdown or anything like that and you need assistance, you must always try to get some kind of help from somewhere. GP. If you can't get any help from GP straight away, please make your way to A and E. Don't be embarrassed by saying I need to speak to somebody in the psychiatric unit because that's what they told me. Mm. When I was in recess, they said if you ever have any problems and you can't get hold of the hospital that you're under, Melmead, or you, you can't get in touch with a GP because it's weekend, please go to A and E. They're not going to be embarrassed by you going into A&E and saying I need to speak to somebody mentally because I'm having a breakdown. They're not going to section you for that. Because you're going in there on your own accord. They would start. have done back in the day. Yeah, they would have done back in the day. In the early 90s and late 80s they would have sectioned you, yes. But now, because they, they would say to you, they would think to themselves, well, yes, they've come in voluntary, they're having a nervous breakdown, so you're clear in the head. Mm. You're clearing the head. It's, it's, it's different if you're having a nervous breakdown indoors and you've gone crazy. But the thing is, if you go to A and E, they think to themselves, "Well, yeah, they're clearing the head mm. because they're thinking straight." So that's a good start by going into A and E for a start, and they will think, "Well, yeah, we can, we can help you." They help you. They put you into contact with people who can actually deal with you. They're not going to section you in A and E. Well, you have like um, you have the mental health. Uh, hospital, you have crisis line. Yeah. You have and Samaritans and mines. Yeah, you have be having that. that. So you can. But, like, but in a dire emergency, when you're having a nervous breakdown, you have the best thing to do is try and make your way to A and E. Well, That's no, because I heard this new thing apparently, like where if you call 999 because you're having a mental breakdown or something you can get arrested now yeah 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 i know that but what i'm saying is if i said if you make your own way yeah but even then you can still end up probably getting arrested what for because they're seeing it as 
time wasting. It's not Correct time, us no, if we're no, wrong, no, but I've no, heard that you no, can get arrested. No, when I was in recess, Helen, you can't get arrested for going down there. You can't. They told me. They told me that every single hospital has a mental health place where you can go. No, I'm talking time. about if you call nine nine nine. Yeah, but don't call. You don't need to. That's what I said. You don't need to call nine 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 for an ambulance. That's that is time wasting. But what I'm saying is, I say make your own way down there. Cab, mm. car. Someone take you down there in a car. That's what I'm saying. Don't phone an ambulance, no, because they're not going to turn up. Mm. Yeah, because that's turn so up, just time wasting. Yeah, because they will turn up with the police. Mm. So the best thing to do is if you think you're going to have a nervous breakdown or you're having a nervous breakdown or you're going in that spiral, go to A&E and make your own way there. Mm. And then you say to yourself, well, yeah, they're thinking straight, they're sensible. Mm. That's a good start. Yeah. And then they will put you in touch with people who can help you. Mm. So, you know, that's what I was told when I was in recess twice. Then after that I thought to myself, because it was very serious and I needed an operation on both them times, didn't I? Mm -hmm. And I, one of them was a stay in for two days. And the thing is with um, that kind of thing is it makes you think more than a lot of times because you know, it's it's just unbelievable. I was thinking to myself when I was on blue light in the ambulance, I'm thinking, no, this can't be happening anymore. Mm. Not anymore. Because it's, it was it was dangerous. And when you're sitting in recess and they're, they're trying to work out what they're gonna do with you, it's like, no, 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 you can't be doing this anymore. And that's what made me stop. Mm. I stopped for myself, I stopped for Helen, I stopped for everything involved because at the end of the day you have to do it for yourself but you also have to do it for other people because they're also affected by it as well. So I don't speak to my family anymore and it, that's healthy for me and it, I have Helen, that's healthy for me also and I also have our pets which is healthy for me too. So if you actually make yourself a healthy environment you can actually have a chance to stop self-harming. Now the thing that I'm going to say now is, if you are um, self-harming at the moment and you're in, in your early 20s and 30s and you think, no, there's no way out, I'm 50, I'll be 51 in January the 28th. Right? And the thing is, things change when you get older and you're not interested in doing the same things you was when you're 30 so you can get out of it that's what I'm going to say, you can get out of things and if you want to really drive yourself really hard you can do it if you've got real power and you can end it can't you? Mm -hmm. and I think that's a good thing that is a really good thing and it's healthy for me too, in the long run, because I'm not getting whisked off the hospital. I'm not doing things that are stupid anymore, and it is very silly. I know that people think that it's not. And I know that people get the drive to do it through adrenaline in it and endorphins, because it's a very powerful drug that you get from doing it. That's, that's how I saw it, really, when I was doing it. Because you get that rush of adrenaline when you're really angry, you get that rush of endorphins when you're really angry and it calms you right down really quickly. That's how I saw it, it calmed me right down and everything just slows itself down when your head is spinning round and around and around. It slows every single thing down and that's fair enough. But there are other ways you can slow things down. Like just walk away, walk away take that 20 minutes they told me it takes a long time to train your mind to say to yourself well look I need that 20 minutes to say yes or no and then what was what I was told by um, a social worker he turned around and he said to me he said look listen he said after that 20 minutes time out if your answer still yes I'm going to self-harm he said you know fair enough do it he said don't do it bad but he said do it but if your answer is going to be no it's not worth it don't do it. 
So he said, you know, you've got to be thinking about, oh, shall I do it or shall I not? But take that 20 minutes time out and think about it really, really, really carefully. It takes a very long time to train your mind not to do it, but you'll do it in the end. You actually say to yourself, no, it's not worth it. When you reach my age, you say to yourself, no, it's not worth it. I'll take my 20 minutes time out. Still, even still now, I'll take my 20 minutes time out. But you must make sure that people know that you need that 20 minutes time out on your own. Because that 20 minutes on your own has to be on your own. You can't have someone coming in and interfering because that's just going to drive you mad. You need the 20 minutes on your own. If it means going out for a walk, listening to music, having a cup of tea, having a fag, anything. Anything you feel like doing, fair enough, take 20 minutes. Whatever works for you basically, yeah, you whatever, to try and whatever work, whatever slow works for it down. you. Whatever, yeah, because that 20, in that 20 minutes it can slow your mind down. If you, it, it, it takes a hell of a long time. It took me, what, 20 years to learn to, to take 20 minutes time out and stop it. 99% of the time in 20 minutes, in that 20 minute time, 99% of the time you'll actually not do it, but there's always that 1% that you would. But don't be ashamed. I mean, no. look, don't be ashamed of me. Don't be ashamed. See? That's my arms. My legs are even worse. Yeah? Mm. Really? Do you want to look like that? Do you really want to look like that? Mm -hmm. Seriously though. Yeah. I'm going to say goodbye now because of the camera's flashing now. So thank you very much to the subscribers and we're going to leave it there. Alright, so good luck everybody and we'll see you later.